Hi everyone, my name's Scott and welcome to Planes, Trains, Everything. Have I got a treat for you? The answer is yes, I do have a treat for you. This is Timetable Challenge number three. Now if you haven't seen Timetable Challenges one and two, I have put links below. They are worth a look at because they are good fun. So what is a Timetable Challenge? Well, this is the best description I can come up with. Man versus public transport. Timetable Challenge number three is by far the most ambitious challenge I've given myself so far. It covers 400 miles, 644 kilometers over 14 hours. It includes three trains, three buses, two metro trains, a ferry and even a tram. A complete smorgasbord of public transport. And also we'll be crossing over the border into England for the first time ever. What could possibly go wrong? Well actually quite a lot. There are five areas of concern. The first one, delays. All I need is one significant delay to a bus or a train, I'll miss my connection, and the whole plan falls apart like a house of cards. The second one is a cancellation. One single cancellation of a train or a bus, and I'm totally snookered. The third option is, this is the Easter weekend. This is the time of the year where, here in the UK, all the local councils and road repair companies get together to discuss how they can cause as much damage as possible to Britain's roads. They will put up traffic lights, they will dig holes, and there's usually delays somewhere. And this is my number one concern. Number four, COVID. COVID hasn't gone away, it's still here, but it's not as bad as it was. But it is still causing problems with Britain's aviation industry. Recently there have been some serious delays at airports trying to get through security and also some flights have been cancelled just due to a lack of staff because they're either self-isolating or off sick because of Covid. And finally, unlike Timetable Challenge 1 and 2 where I focused on the west coast of Scotland, this is heading south over the border to England. I'm going to be passing through some large cities and towns and unlike Timetable Challenge 1 and 2 which is primarily rural I have to make sure that when I'm going from a train station to a bus stop, I'm getting the right bus stop because I don't know these places at all. Anyway guys, I'm doing this um, intro today because we've got an early start tomorrow morning, 8.30am, Buchanan bus station in Glasgow. Please see me there, please don't be late, don't make me leave without you. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, I knew you wouldn't let me down. Welcome to Glasgow's Buchanan bus station for leg one of ten from Glasgow to Edinburgh airport. Right, we'll get on board. I'll see you when we're in Edinburgh. Cue the music. Leg two of seven, the tram from Edinburgh Airport into Edinburgh City Centre. Right, let's get on board.
I'm here on platform two and I'm waiting for the LNER service to King's Cross, but I'm only going as far as Newcastle. Now I could have bought just one ticket and traveled from Edinburgh to Newcastle, but where's the challenge in that? No, I used split ticketing, which means I've got two tickets for this journey. I'm going Edinburgh to Berwick-upon-Tweed and then from Berwick-upon-Tweed to Newcastle. That way, I'm saving about 50% on the train, on, on the train fare, and for some reason, LNER don't like you doing that because it takes away revenue, but it's valid, so I'm going to do it. One slight problem, however, I have car A between Edinburgh and Berwick and car K between Berwick and Newcastle. And I've done it that way because I wanted a window seat on the first part. I'm not fussed about the second part and I've got an aisle seat there. I just have to do a bit of a shimmy along the, uh, the, the platform at Berwick-upon-Tweed. I don't think I'm going to have enough time to go from the very end of the train to the very front of the train. So I may have to continue the shimmy through the train itself. I'll see you when I'm on board. As feared, my window seat's on the wrong side of the train, all the scenery's on this side, so I've actually decided to stand here in the vestibule area to try and capture some of the scenery for you. There's a hen's do heading for Newcastle, and I was in the epicentre of it. There's about 20 of them. Oh, I don't know if Newcastle's aware of this, but I'm glad I'm getting off at berwick upon tweed Jimmy along the platform at Berwick upon Tweed up to Car K was an absolute failure. You can hear the girls are absolutely having a party here because the doors didn't open. So I'm still here at the back of the train in Car A. I'll be getting off at Newcastle in around about 30 minutes along with the 20 or so girls from the, the hens party. Wow, what a racket. They're having a great time in there. I'm glad I'm here. Newcastle. That train was completely bonkers. The amount of singing and dancing that was going on. Whoa. Right. Metro to North Shields. West Jesmond and I'm here because I caught the wrong train heading in the wrong direction I have to go that way not that way oops
now leg number five, the ferry to North Shields. A slight change of plan because of the fact I caught the wrong train. Plan of action was to go from Newcastle to North Shields, ferry to South Shields, then back to Newcastle. But I'm doing it in reverse now. At least I've still got enough time to connect with my train to Carlisle. Great little ferry ride. What a shame it only lasted seven minutes. Okay, leg number six ahead, the metro from North Shields back into Newcastle. Welcome to Newcastle. Despite getting slightly lost, uh, I managed to get here with an extra 10 minutes to spare. So I'm going to get some lunch because I'm absolutely starving. It's 2.15 p.m. I've got 25 minutes before my train leaves. Oh, I needed that. I'm glad to be leaving Newcastle. No disrespect to the great city of Newcastle, but I thought if anything went wrong, it was more likely going to happen here. Newcastle's on the main line between Edinburgh and King's Cross, and being an Easter weekend, if there was a problem on that line, it was going to affect Newcastle. Also, I hadn't used the metro before here in Newcastle. It is fairly straightforward, but I just made a wrong decision and I ended up going in the wrong uh, direction. Saved myself 10 minutes. Anyway, that is leg number seven behind me, the train from Newcastle to Carlisle.
That was one seriously colourful train. I wonder if it's the most colourful train in Britain, if not Europe. That was a 1645 from Carlisle to Milton Keynes. OK, I now have to find a bus stop for leg number eight, the bus to Lockerbie. Well, I'm starting to worry because the timetable there, which has only been in effect for two weeks, indicates this bus I'm waiting for only goes as far as Gretna and not to Lockerbie, which is a bit of a problem. We'll find out in approximately 12 minutes. Seven o'clock. Yes, that bus service is operated by a company called Houston's, and it was almost a case of Houston's, we've got a problem. I indicated for the bus to stop, and he just went straight past. I'm sure he saw me, but I think he was dreaming because he just went around the corner, then stopped, and left his doors open. Fortunately, a little voice said, go around the corner because he might have stopped, and there he was. That is the closest I've ever come to failing a timetable challenge. My heart was in my mouth. Right, I'm here in Lockerbie. I've got about 30 minutes now for the next bus, which is leg nine from Lockerbie to Dumfries. Hopefully this one will go a little smoother. I decided I had just about enough time for fish and chips. Mm. A little bit crunchy, good. This bus stop looks as if it hasn't been used in years. But this is the one apparently. I really hope this bus turns up because I do not have a plan B. Uh, there is, uh, there are track works on the main line between Glasgow and London this weekend, uh, therefore there are no trains. Lockerbie does have a station. There is a rail replacement service, but I just went down there and I don't see anything regarding it, so maybe it doesn't serve Lockerbie. Uh, and Lockerbie's not a huge town, and I don't think there's a huge selection of accommodation should I get stranded here. I need to get this bus. So if necessary, I will stand in front of the bus to make sure it stops. And it should be here in about 10 minutes. Hiya, don't freeze, thanks. Josh, a lot. This has been the most ambitious timetable challenge so far. Usually, I've got a plan B. Should something go wrong and I get stranded, at least I can work my way back to Glasgow or somewhere like that. Tonight at Lockerbie, if that bus hadn't turned up, with no rail service, at 8pm on a Saturday, with tomorrow being Easter Sunday, what chance was there of getting out of Lockerbie? That could have been an absolute disaster. Now I'm in Dumfries and uh, I saw the station whiz past and I'm about a mile from the station. That's where the bus stop was. So I'm hurrying back to the station. I hope I can make this. Whew. Easy. Made it with 10 minutes to go. Right. I just hope this train's running now. The 
very quiet station. There are buses. Now that's a good sight, isn't it? Train back to Glasgow. As far as I can see though, I might be the only passenger. The plan of action was to do the final scene for this video at Glasgow Central last night, but that didn't go according to plan. After a very stressful day where I caught the wrong train at Newcastle, almost missed my bus at Carlisle and faced the spectre of being stranded overnight in Lockerbie on a Saturday night when the following Sunday night was Easter Sunday and there's no public transport, I was so glad to get on that train at Dumfries heading for Glasgow and I thought to myself, timetable challenge number three is in the bag. Unfortunately, five miles from Glasgow, the train ground to a halt. Ticket inspector came through and told us, sadly, there'd been a fatality on the line ahead and we wouldn't be moving for some time. In true Glasgow spirit, a man was travelling from Kilmarnock to Glasgow. He had been doing a concert in Kilmarnock and was returning home. He had an acoustic guitar and for an hour he put on an impromptu concert for us. It was amazing. Anyway, we arrived back in the Glasgow Central at 12.05 a.m., as the Saturday was preceding a public holiday here in the UK, a lot of train services had been cancelled early. The bus to Glasgow Airport, and I walk, I can walk to Glasgow Airport in 20 minutes, that had finished for the night, and I had to sprint through the streets of Glasgow at midnight to catch that last bus home. Now there will be a timetable challenge number four, but I'm going to make it a lot easier than timetable challenge number three, because I nearly came a cropper a couple of times. Anyway guys, thanks very much for watching this. Please give me a thumbs up because believe me, on this occasion, I deserve it. And I'll see you next time. I think